In this tutorial, I'm going to cover a hugely common and very important piece of functionality, and that's extracting days, months, years, and by extension, other date parts from a date value. So I've created a pandas data frame, and within that, I've got a higher date column, and we're going to want to extract the day, the month, and the year values so that we can append it onto our data frame like you can see in this example below. Now, if you've worked with SQL before, this will be very familiar. If you've had to, again, analyze things by certain values, that could be days or months, quarters, whatever. And there's a lot of different functionality we can use to achieve this, but it's very similar to what we're doing here. In the first example, I just declare a sample date variable of the type date time, and using the date part function, I'm just extracting the year and it returns in our results as year. And of course, that is 2023 in this example. We can also get a string representation of this data in SQL by just selecting the date name. But this time I'm taking the month um, portion of get date, which just returns the current date. And I'm just calling this month name in the results. And you see we get the correct month of May. So just this serves as a helpful reminder uh, of how common this is, how much out of the box functionality there is for doing this in several programming languages. And this isn't something that's especially new. This is just standard functionality. But it's critical that you know this, uh, especially when working with Python libraries like Pandas, which is still a gold standard uh, for data analysis within Python. So we'll look at a much more involved example in the next step, which will be the main sort of code build out. But bear in mind these fundamentals if you have used other programming languages before. In this tutorial, it's worth noting that I'm using Google Colab just because it's easy for anyone following this to get started within the browser by going to colab.research.google.com and just starting to write Python code. It saves having to go through the process of setting up Jupyter Notebooks, VS Code, PyCharm, whatever that may be, but you can use this in whichever editor you may like. So the first thing I've done is just imported Pandas, given it the alias PD, and I've created a dictionary um, named employees, and this just contains our values uh, within list objects. So essentially we've got four key value pairs representing different employee attributes, first name, last name, hire date, and age. And these will make up the columns now as we've created DF, which is going to be our pandas data frame based on this employees dictionary. So now if we go ahead and print the data frame, we can go ahead and see how this actually looks. So by using DF, we can simply print the tabular format, which is the first name, last name, hire date, and the age of the five employees that we have created within our dictionary. What we will want to do now is go ahead and actually shape this so that we can go ahead and extract those date part values, namely day, month, and year. So what we'll need to do is convert that higher date or rather check that higher date is currently a date time format. We wouldn't expect that because we've just converted it from a dictionary. So we'll see that higher date is currently just marked as an object. So what we need to do now is convert that date type into a higher date date type that is going to allow us to go ahead and extract those core elements. So what we will do is we will now go ahead and convert this to a date time data type. Now, how do we do that? Well, there's a simple function that we can use. We already have a pandas data frame, so we can just convert this with pd.2 underscore data type. So what we'll do is we will take the data frame and the higher date column from that. We'll reference it. This will be the the new column that we are essentially creating with the date time values. And we will take pd.2 underscore date time function. And again, we will call upon the higher date, the existing column to replace this. You will see we will get a warning here. So what we can do is actually go ahead and specify a format if we like um, in order to, to capture that date. So we could just put the format equal to standard day, month, and year if we like. And we can go ahead and do that now. 
Again, you don't necessarily have to do this. I'll do it just to bypass the error by specifying lowercase uh, day, month, and year format, which will just give us a shortened year format. You could replace the lowercase y with an uppercase for the full year integer format, such as 2023 rather than 23, but that's up to you. So the next thing that we can do is actually go ahead and look at the current data types again, just to make sure that our higher date was indeed converted successfully. So we can go ahead and just um, specify a comment here to look at the display of the updated data types. Um, and again, we should see the object still remains, which is fine for the example that we currently have, but we have a date time 64 NS uh, data type, which indicates that it is now a date time object. So the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and actually perform uh, that extraction. So we want to take the day, the month, and the year uh, from that higher date column, and we're going to use the DT uh, accessor to access the date time attributes of the column. So we're going to be able to simply use DT.day, DT.month, and DT.year attributes, and this will be a pretty simple and lightweight code uh, example to go ahead and extract those so it's not too verbose so we can simply take um, we can name this new column that we're essentially appending onto our data frame and we'll just call it day in the first example and we can just reference the higher date and we use dot dt dot day again to access those specific attributes of the column that we've converted to date type I'll just copy and paste the next lines, make sure that we call the new column whatever we like, but month makes sense, and year also. And then we can just take the dt.month and dt.year respective, respectively to go ahead and actually get those, those values that we want to see uh, appended on to our existing data frame. That will run fine. So now we can go ahead and actually look at how this data frame now looks. So we can print the updated data frame, um, just include a comment there for readability. And when we print that DF, the naming for our updated data frame, you now see we have the first name, last name, higher date, and age as before, but we've successfully extracted the day of the year, the month, and the year. Now this is correct. For example, we have the 12th of May 2020 in the last example, as per the format that we explicitly specified um, when we initially created this dictionary. But what we we'll want to do is go ahead now and convert that data frame um, back to UK format, which is day, day, month, month, uh, and year, 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 uh, using the um, dt.strf time method. So this will take specified formatting to each value within our higher date column and it will replace the existing values that we have with formatted strings. So we can simply convert this to, to UK date format. This initial higher date will still retain the day, the month, and the year that we extracted, but we're just essentially returning a formatted string output where that higher date column is and replacing it in place. So we'll go ahead and specify the values that we want. We'll essentially want a percentage indicator, the date for the for the day. We'll have a dash percentage month, dash percentage, and uppercase Y to get the full extent of that year value. And now when we go ahead and print that data frame, we see we get everything in the correct format, correct UK format, higher date, and our extracted values. A simple and efficient way to extract date parts.